Hello, Tony from Bikeberry here. Today, what we're gonna talk about is all about chain tensioners. Now, this is something that I've spent the last couple weeks on trying all the ones that are available, <laughs> uh, taking them on and off the bike and really testing them. And what I found out is, is that there's no one right answer. It depends what you're doing. Are you riding up and down the road like I am in a small town out in the country? Are you going more on a trail that could be bumpy, that could be, you know, treacherous, that kind of thing? It depends what you want to use for your application. Okay. So what I learned is quite a bit because I've taken all that are available on the site and I've thrown them on the bike. So you're gonna see this reflected in the footage. Uh, sometimes it's kind of dark because <laughs> I ran out of daylight. I was putting so much time into testing them to really understand what each one brings to the table. Now, I was also going to, hey, this is how you put this one on and then let's go for a test. But the variables are so many there that I'm gonna make a whole separate video on how to mount each one and what I had to go through because I really just tested them on the F-Zero. Now, if you're going to put it on a beach cruiser or a mountain bike, it's to me, it's totally different in how you're going to mount it on there. But what I'm gonna do in that video is show you what I went through to mount them. So for right now, let's stick to this video of just my thoughts on what each model and each type brings to the table. As far as the different types that were made, you could tell from the basic one that you get with your engine kit to these Springer types to then the, all the way to the billet type, you know, case mounted billet type, uh, you know, and go as far as the Arsh. They're all to solve a different problem. They are made to improve upon a past uh, style model, you know, way of doing it. I also learned that there's so many ways to mount these. You can not only mount this spring one down here, but you can also mount it up here, as in you'll see in the older Bikeberry video content, they were mounting them in the top. So what we'll do is I'm just gonna go from your basic one that you get with the engine kit and keep stepping it up through all the series of all six of them. What we'll do at the very end of the video is just uh, an accumulation of my thoughts of each one of them what I think they'd be good for, for your application, okay? Please stick around to the end because then you'll learn what is my general favorite and I think that will work for most applications. But let's run through them all and we're gonna start with the basic one that came with your kit. So as you can see, this is the basic one that came with your kit. It's actually a really good option. The cool thing about it is it's a simple pulley that mounts on the lower part of your frame in a really solid way. Now, the variables that you're gonna run into are whether it's, if it's an F-Zero bike like this where the frame has oval-shaped tubing, I feel that it's a much more solid mounting platform than a beach cruiser. Next up is a spring idler pulley. This has a single spring and a single pulley on the arm. Now, as you can see, mounting on the lower position like this, there's just a little bit of movement. Overall, it did a pretty good job. But I think to actually get real movement out of it, we may need to try some different mounting positions in the future. So next up is the double pulley spring tensioner type. I really love this one because it seemed to track really well. Uh, the chain rode on that middle one while the other one attached to the spring really kept the tension in check.
All right, next up is the case spring tensioner. This is a stamp steel type that's uh, bent over, you know, just to adjust to get under the chain. Uh, this one's a little uh, more in line, I would say, than the billet. So I like that aspect of it. It's not as pretty <laughs> as the billet one is. Uh, you know, it mounts to the outside. It looks a little more, you know, rough and rugged and all that, but uh, I believe it's going to do the job. So let's take a ride and just see how it performs. billet spring chain tensioner now at first it kind of threw me off because it has a lot of movement in the mechanism of it but i think it's proven to be a necessary thing the only qualm i have i would say is that this wheel isn't riding you know a true you know directly underneath of it there's a little slight angle which i'm afraid would wear the little sprocket down prematurely but that's something that I'd have to keep testing it for a long period of time. Um, but so far, overall, it's worked really great. The biggest hang up that you'll experience that you need to know right off the bat is getting your chain the proper tension for it to work properly. Now, I got the chain pretty tight to where it almost is tight enough where it would run without a sprock or, you know, without a tensioner on it. So it's taken up any extra slack. When you watch the footage that I'm about to put up here of me running around town and down my road and all of that, it really kept the tension, you know, stop signs, uh, yield, you know, where I had to yield and where I was kind of slowly moving. Uh, it, it did fine. Just like any of these parts, it's all in the setup. So enjoy the footage. Up next is the arch chain tensioner. Now, what I would do if I were you is go get some fender washers, a good variety of sizes and some different bolts. I tend to use some of these heavier brackets, if you can see in the back here. Let me go around the other side. See it, ones that came with other engine kits, they're just a heavier flat piece that's bent, especially on this big frame for the F-Zero. Uh, you're gonna want something like that. But overall, you'll see how it performs as I, you know, cruise up and down the roads in town and all of that. Uh, it's really good, especially as much as I change stuff on this bike. I need a, a very adjustable chain tensioner.
right, and there's going to be three rocks in a row on the right. Boy, that was a lot of fun just trying to figure out all of the chain tensioners and their different performance and everything. And I think there's so many variables when it comes to using these. Again, it's the bike, it's uh, you know how tight your chain is. Man, there's so many. So we'll do another video where we'll go in and mount each one and I'll walk you through my thoughts of it. So that'll really help you troubleshoot when you get to you know add on yours. Probably the hardest thing with uh, rating these is what do you rate them, right? I think functionality is one thing right i think uh how they look is another thing right uh, i think how much do you have to modify your bike and your situation to make it work for you so that's another thing can you just bolt it on there and go and it works really well uh, that's really the things that i keep that keep coming up in mind to me so here is my thoughts on each and every one all right Option one is the basic tension that comes with your kit. This one's solid. It's uh, It holds the position of the chain and it really didn't move while I used it. Now the fear is, is it tipping into the spoke? So pay attention to that. And that would be more on your beach cruisers with the round tubing to clamp to. This is a good one because it has the double strap. So each one's kind of independent and not just one that goes over it. So you can get a little more you know, clamping power. Uh, but this is a solid option. I can see why they've chosen it to be, you know, your main one. This uh, single pulley spring tensioner, I think this is location dependent mounting as to how good it'll work. For me, it didn't work as well because there wasn't that much travel. I would love more travel in it um, and figure that out. Uh, so it was okay. And I thought the improvement with the double with the double option was much better because just like your basic one it rides the chain rides on this pulley then this one does the tensioning so i really love this one i felt like it did the job phenomenally um again these are all ones that are mounted and they're kind of rough and rugged looking so if that's a, a look that you're going for and you're fine with it then that's cool too a lot of people paint them and all that and kind of modify the look a little bit so that they match the ride a little bit better the case mounted spring tensioner i this one worked really well it doesn't look as good as like the billet but it worked really well i felt like it was set up properly the spacing was proper uh, everything it just it was easy to put on and it functioned uh, flawlessly i thought now the thing with um you know these little sprockets uh there was two things i found out one if you're going on rough terrain it'll hop the chain could hop off of here and get you know get off so that could happen the second one was if you take this and mount it on a rigid structure like here and actually put a lot of tension up on it like i do with this these pulleys it'll pull this um, sprocket off of the bearing so it's not meant for tight tension so i wouldn't use it that way but this one overall uh, worked wonderful uh the cnc one i feel like Everybody loves the look of it, so it's the I would say it's the one that people like the most. But um, my issues with it were it was inside the case where you have to pull this cover off, and I had the bucking bar. I had to make a longer bucking bar. Your screws change and everything, which the screws come with it, but you have to really fiddle with a lot of that stuff to make it line up well. I feel like uh, the movement here probably could use a bushing or something, and then the spacer in my application needed to be a little longer. So I feel like if you want the style of this one, be prepared for some modifications. 
which is okay, you know, but um, you can see that the chain dug into here. So it's not a, it's not as bolt on and ready to go as this one is. Uh, so just be aware of that. But otherwise, I think you, with some work, you could get it functioning just like this one. The curved chain tensioner is the final one, and that is my absolute favorite. Now, I use it more utilitarian because I'm always messing with the bike and trying to show you guys how to do stuff. So I'm putting things on and taking it off, and I need places to mount, you know, sometimes holders to get the chain away. <laughs> I make these plastic nylon holders, you know, just uh, guides, I guess, not holders, guides uh, to keep the chain away. So I want something that I can clamp on. And, and I know it's gonna work. It's solid stationary. Now, some people don't like them. They feel like they're ugly. And you do have to use all of these um, fender washers to mount it on. Uh, and then I use brackets like this instead of the U-bolts. The U-bolts, in my opinion, um, dig into the frame because it's a single, you know, quarter inch like wire. <laughs> uh, and it ends up crimping the frame and I don't really like that. So I like a more wide um, you know, surface mounting and it doesn't move. It's great. It's fantastic. But if, if style wise, it doesn't fit you, um, I could understand that, but all day long I go with this one. All right. That concludes chain tensioners. I thank you for watching. Please like subscribe, comment below your chain tensioner experience. Uh, what you've dealt with, let me know. I'd like to see it. If you need help, jump in the Facebook group. We're always there to help each other out and build better uh, bikes and all that stuff and get them mechanically running really well. Um, yeah, I'm super excited about this. Pay attention uh, to the channel. There's going to be more coming up on how to mount them. So there'll be what we'll say is a part two to this. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped you out. Take care. Let's roll.